What's up guys and welcome back to the Concrete Edge right here on Deco Creek TV. My name's Jeff and on today's episode we're going to be taking a look at using styrofoam to create a structure for vertical concrete. How does the whole thing work? What are the pros and cons? And who knows, maybe even a few tips that'll help you get started with foam core construction. So stay tuned and you're going to learn all about it. So hand carved vertical concrete, I mean, it has been around for quite a while now, but in the last 10 years or so, the big thing is using styrofoam as the substrate. Now, this idea does come with some debate in the vertical field, uh, so we're just gonna take a closer look at it today. I mean, some contractors would say that they'll never use styrofoam, while others would say that that's all they use. Now, I gotta say for us, it has been a game changer. So we're gonna start off here by going over how the whole thing works. I mean, the idea is that foam is cost-effective, lightweight, and easy to shape. Now, this opens up all kinds of design opportunities for vertical contractors. I mean, you can buy pre-made kits to make seating walls quick and easy, or you can start with a foam billet and you can shape it any way you want. I mean, this way works great for large rock features or boulders or columns or wood beams, or I mean, honestly, pretty much anything that you can come up with. All you need is some sort of a cutting device. Now this could be done with a chainsaw and a sawzall, but some kind of hot wire element is gonna work the best. Now we like this one here because it opens up wide enough that you can slice an entire billet in half if you need to. And the heating unit is just right here on the frame. All you gotta do, plug it in, turn it on, give it a minute to heat up and boom, you can cut that foam any way you want. Now there are quite a few options out there for these. So we'll leave it a link uh, right down in the description for this one right here. Now, it's definitely always a good idea to have a few extra wires on hand just in case you break one. And I'm telling you, if you cut enough foam, you probably will. Now, the other thing we like to have is one of these uh, little units here that we like to call a scoop. And this is nice for uh, just creating keyways to tie things together. Um, or it's also great for uh, making large voids if you're doing ice rocks or water features. So one more thing that we like to have um, in our foam cutting box is just a little hot knife like this right here. And it comes in really handy for small details or if you just need to make a quick cut somewhere. Now, once you got the foam all shaped out the way you want it, it's time to give it some structure. Now, you are going to have to treat this a little differently than most other vertical concrete jobs that just require a type S mortar for the scratch coat. Um, this foam is really easy to use, but it's going to need a scratch coat with a little more strength. Now, our GFRC backer coat just happens to work perfect for this. And if you do GFRC anyways, then you probably already got some of this laying around your shop. And once this GFRC is on that foam and it has a chance to harden up, I mean, you can pretty much apply any vertical mix you want. Now this backer coat can get sprayed out of a mortar sprayer or you can just throw it up by hand. And the rougher you leave it, the better it's gonna be. I mean, all those gnarly fibers all sticking out everywhere, those actually work great for holding that carb mix on your structure. So if you do use a trowel for this, just make sure you don't make it too smooth. So if this is the first that you're hearing about all this, I know what you're probably thinking. I mean, why would anybody use anything but foam? And well, honestly, that would depend on who you ask. I mean, there's no uh, actual data out there that I'm aware of proving that foam core construction is gonna hold up just as good as that steel frame structure. I mean, we tend to look at it as more on a situational basis. Now, I do wanna point out here that all the rock features that are outside our shop in Orville, Ohio, I mean, they are all foam core construction and they're doing just fine after eight years. Now, I also know tons of contractors around the country who've had great success with foam core construction. I mean, in fact, I mean, I've never personally heard of a story of somebody using uh, foam core and something going wrong, wrong with it down the road. I mean, the big thing here is just to use some common sense. I mean, obviously, we're not going to go put down st uh, styrofoam as a base for a sidewalk, pile some vertical mix on it and expect it to hold up. I mean, this is for vertical concrete only. Now, if it's an actual retaining wall that's going to be holding back a bunch of weight, I mean, I'd probably do things the old school way and uh, pour a footer and lay a block for the structure. Now, seating walls, on the other hand, I mean, they're a little bit different. They're not holding any, uh, any weight back. I mean, they're just there to sit on. And I can tell you from experience that uh, foam works great for that. And because of the fact that it's lightweight, I mean, you don't even need a footer underneath of it. I mean, you can just build it right on your existing slab. So I think you're starting to get the picture here. If it, if it needs to function as a weight bearing structure, then foam might not be the best idea. If it's just there for decorative purposes, I mean, which is what most hand carved vertical concrete is used for, uh, then you should really just give foam core a try. I mean, who knows? It might just open up some design options that you didn't think were possible. 
please let us know um, in the comments if you have thoughts on this one way or another, if you've tried it, if you haven't tried it, if you're thinking about it. Um, again, just let's just get the conversation going in the comments. I would, we can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. Well, guys, that's pretty much it for this week's show. I mean, hopefully this video was helpful in your quest to create the highest end decorative concrete possible. I gotta say, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video as well as all the other videos on our channel. I mean, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you guys' support by tuning in every week and always hitting them uh, like and subscribe buttons. Uh, please don't forget to leave us a comment. I mean, whether it's about uh, weighing in on your thoughts on foam core, or if you just have questions on this and you're not sure where to get started, just please let us know. Now, if you already are a subscriber, please don't forget about that little bell icon for the notifications. Uh, that way you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And it honestly, it really does help our channel out. So from all of us here at DecoCrete TV, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.